This is a general installation guide for brake pads and rotors. There may be some details that vary between car models. Please refer to your OEM for further instruction. Have the following parts and specialty tools available before you start pad and rotor installation. You'll need power stop brake pads, power stop rotors, a bottle of brake fluid as specified in the owner's manual, brake component lube, a caliper piston clamp or a C-clamp, a jack and jack stands rated for the weight of the vehicle, and finally we recommend using safety glasses and gloves during the installation. Have the vehicle in the park position and make sure it is on a hard, level surface. Then check the brake fluid level at the reservoir. The brake fluid reservoir should be about half full. Monitor the fluid level while compressing the caliper piston. Before raising the vehicle, check all wheels remaining on the ground. Set the parking brake if the rear wheels will remain on the ground. And loosen the lug nuts on the wheels just enough to break them free. Lift the vehicle and support it with jack stands using the proper jacking points specified by the manufacturer. Please be aware that you should always use jack stands. Never attempt to work on an elevated vehicle held in place only by hydraulic jack. Remove the lug nuts and the wheel. It is best to work on one wheel at a time, leaving the other side intact as a point of reference. Place the wheel and tire assembly under the vehicle nearest a frame rail, suspension component, or cross member. In the event of a faulty jack stand, the wheel and tire will stop the vehicle falling onto the ground. After removing the wheel, inspect the brake components for any signs of leaks or damage. Remove the two caliper guide pin bolts that hold the caliper onto the bracket. Then remove the caliper and support it using a brake caliper hanger or a regular wire coat hanger. Please be aware that you should always support the caliper. Never allow the caliper to hang from the brake hose. This can cause damage to the brake hose. Remove the pads. Then remove the two caliper bracket bolts along with the caliper bracket. Before removing the rotor, check for retaining screws. Some vehicles use retaining screws to hold the rotor to the hub. The rotor can now be removed. Sometimes rust will make the rotor bind to the hub, and a mallet will be needed to loosen it. Tap both the front and back side alternating left and right, top and bottom of the rotor. The next step is to compress the piston back inside the caliper. The piston has extended as the pad material wears. With new, thicker pads, you must return the piston back inside the caliper body to give the thicker pads room for installation. Using a piston compressor or a large C-clamp, place a used brake pad over the face of the piston to protect the surface from marring, and begin compressing the piston. As you turn the handle on the clamp, it will increase pressure on the piston until it becomes flush with the surrounding metal. Push the piston in slowly to prevent unsafe back pressure and damage to the ABS modulator, brake valving, or master cylinder. Monitor the brake fluid reservoir level while compressing the caliper piston and make sure it does not overflow. Then, loosen and remove the piston compressor or C-clamp used. It may be necessary to drain some fluid from the master cylinder reservoir. Please be aware that many rear brake pistons cannot be retracted with a C-clamp as they screw in and out. This type of brake piston will have two recessed notches and a caliper piston adjuster is used to compress this piston. Clean any rust off the face of the hub mating surface with a wire brush and a hub cleaning kit. Rust or debris on the hub can cause rotor runout and lead to wheel vibration. Apply a thin film of anti-seize to the face of the hub. This will make it easier to remove the rotor next time. Before installing the rotor, clean it with mild soap and water. Then wipe it clean with a lint-free cloth. Now the new rotor can be installed. Please be aware when installing rotors we recommend checking the lateral runout. This will tell you if any variation exists between the rotor and the hub to which it is mounted. Depending on the application, the maximum acceptable lateral runout can range from 3 to 5 thousandths of an inch. Always refer to manufacturer specifications for each application. If a variation exists, this is generally easy to correct by re-indexing the rotor one hole at a time. The goal is to reduce runout by finding the best position for the rotor. If the rotor is not properly indexed, it's possible to have some vibration or pulsation issues and damage the rotors over time. If you're removing the rotor to perform any other service to the vehicle, mark the position of the rotor relative to the hub before it's removed to make sure it is reinstalled in the same position. Some vehicles use a retaining screw to hold the rotor into position on the hub. It is not possible to re-index this style rotor. Remove the old hardware from the caliper bracket and use a wire brush to clean rust from areas where the pads or hardware contact the bracket. This helps ensure that the new hardware will sit correctly on the bracket. Then inspect and replace all hardware as needed, making sure to apply brake lube to the guide pins and pad contact points. Worn or damaged hardware can lead to noise or poor brake pad performance. Install the caliper bracket and torque the caliper bracket bolts to the manufacturer's specifications. 
apply a small amount of brake lube on the back of the pads before they contact the caliper. Please be careful to not get any brake lube on the friction side of the pads. Then install the new pads. Install the caliper, making sure not to twist the brake hose and torque the caliper bolts to the manufacturer's specifications. Bleed the brakes to remove any air from the brake system. We recommend bleeding the brakes every time you replace the pads and rotors. Not all vehicles have the same bleeding procedure. You should always refer to the factory service manual for the proper procedure. Please take note that after bleeding the brakes, make sure the brake fluid reservoir is filled to the max line. Do not overfill the reservoir. Install the wheel and lug nuts, then lower the vehicle back onto the ground to finish tightening the lug nuts to the manufacturer's specified torque. Follow the proper tightening sequence based on the number of lug nuts used. It is critically important that the braking procedure is performed to provide consistent braking, quiet stopping, and trouble-free performance. Enjoy your newest performance upgrade with Power Stop Brakes. For more helpful guides and tips like these on your performance upgrade brake kit, go to PowerStop.com.